CIET NCERT presents audio book of social science for class 8 entitled social and political life 3 this is the lesson number 9 public facilities from page number 106 to page number 119 let's listen to the lesson number 9 public facilities page number 106 Amu and Kumar traveling through Chennai in a bus As they go round the city they observe the water facilities available in different parts of Chennai We see Ram Gopal in Anna Nagar and Padma set up it We also see Siva in Madapakkam and Subramaniam in Mailapur The above was page number 107 page number 108 water and the people of chennai senior government officials like mr ram gopal live in annanagar chennai this area looks lush and green with lawns maintained by a generous spring of water bungalows here have tap water for major part of the day on days when the water supply is inadequate Mr Ram Gopal speaks to a senior official whom he knows in the municipal water board and a water tanker is easily arranged for his house Like most areas of the city Subramanian's apartments in Mailapur suffers from water shortage This area gets municipal water once in 2 days A private borewell meets some of the residents water needs Borewell water is however brackish so the residents use it in their toilets and for washing For other uses water is purchased from tankers. Subramanian spends up to rupees 500 to 600 per month on buying water from the tankers. For drinking water, residents have installed water purification systems in their homes. Siva lives on rent on the first floor of a house in Madi Pakkam and gets water once in 4 days. Shortage of water is one major reason why Siva can't bring his family to Chennai. For drinking Siva buys bottled water. Padma works as a domestic help in Saidapet and lives in the nearby slum. She pays a rent of rupees six fifty for the hutment, which has neither a bathroom nor a tap connection. For thirty such hutments, there is a common tap at one corner, in which water comes from a borewell for twenty minutes twice daily. A family gets to fill a maximum of three buckets within this time. The same water is used for washing and drinking. In summer, the flow becomes a trickle, so that one family gets water only at the cost of another. People have to wait long hours for water tankers. One, you have seen the four situations illustrated above. Based on these, what impression do you get of the water situation in Chennai? Two. Pick out the various sources of water for household use from the description alongside. Three, what in your view is similar and what is different in Subramanian's and Padma's experiences? Four, write a paragraph describing the water supply situation in your area. Five, why does water flow in a trickle in summer in most places in India? Find out. Discuss. Is there a general shortage of water for everyone in Chennai? Can you think of two reasons why different people get varying amounts of water? Page number 109. Water as a part of the fundamental right to life. Water is essential for life and for good health. Not only is it necessary for us to be able to meet our daily needs, but safe drinking water can prevent many water-related diseases. India has one of the largest number of cases of diseases such as diarrhea, dysentery, cholera. Over 1600 Indians, most of them children below the age of 5, reportedly die every day because of water-related diseases. These deaths can be prevented if people have access to safe drinking water. The Constitution of India recognizes the right to water as being a part of the right to life under Article 21. This means that it is the right of every person whether rich or poor to have sufficient amounts of water to fulfill his or her daily needs at a price that he or she can afford. In other words, 
there should be universal access to water. There have been several court cases in which both the High Courts and the Supreme Court have held that the right to safe drinking water is a fundamental right. In 2007, the Andhra Pradesh High Court restated this while hearing a case based on a letter written by a villager of Mehboob Nagar district on the contamination of drinking water. The villager's complaint was that a textile company was discharging poisonous chemicals into a stream near his village, contaminating groundwater, which was the source for irrigation and drinking water. The judges directed the Mehboob Nagar district collector to supply 25 litres of water to each person in the village. Public facilities Like water, there are other essential facilities that need to be provided for everyone. Last year, you read about two other such facilities, healthcare and sanitation. Similarly, there are things like electricity, public transport, schools and colleges that are also necessary. These are known as public facilities. Right to water entitles everyone to sufficient, safe, acceptable, physically accessible and affordable water for personal and domestic use. United Nations, 2002 The above was page number 109. Page number 110 The important characteristic of a public facility is that once it is provided, its benefits can be shared by many people. For instance, a school in the village will enable many children to get educated. Similarly, the supply of electricity to an area can be useful for many people. Farmers can run pump sets to irrigate their fields. People can open small workshops that run on electricity. Students will find it easier to study and most people in the village will benefit in some way or the other. The Government's Role Given that public facilities are so important, Someone must carry the responsibility of providing these to the people. This someone is the government. One of the most important functions of the government is to ensure that these public facilities are made available to everyone. Let us try and understand why the government and only the government must bear this responsibility. We have seen that private companies operate for profit in the market. You read about this in the chapter on the story of a shirt in your class 7 book. In most of the public facilities, there is no profit to be had. For example, what profit can accrue to a company for keeping the drains clean or running an anti-malaria campaign? A private company will probably not be interested in undertaking such work. But, for other public facilities such as schools and hospitals, private companies may well be interested. We have many of these, particularly in large cities. Similarly, if you are living in a city, you will have seen private companies supplying water through tankers or supplying drinking water in sealed bottles. In such cases, private companies provide public facilities but at a price that only some people can afford. Hence, this facility is not available to all at an affordable rate. If we go by the rule that people will get as much as they can pay for, then many people who cannot afford to pay for such facilities will be deprived of the opportunity to live a decent life. The Indian Constitution guarantees the right to education for all children between the ages of 6 to 14 years. Equity in the schooling facilities available to all children is an important aspect of this right. However, activists and scholars working on education have documented the fact that schooling in India continues to be highly unequal. The government needs to play an active role in providing adequate access to proper health facilities for the entire population. This includes the eradication of preventable diseases like polio, as shown in the above photograph. Page number 111 Clearly, this is not a desirable option. Public facilities relate to people's basic needs. Any modern society requires that these facilities are provided so that people's basic needs are met. The right to life that the constitution guarantees is for all persons living in this country. The responsibility to provide public facilities, therefore, must be that of the government. Where does the government get money for public facilities? Every year, you must have heard the government budget being presented in the parliament. 
This is an account of the expenses the government has made on its programs in the past year and how much it plans to spend in the coming year. In the budget, the government also announces the various ways in which it plans to meet these expenses. The main source of revenue for the government is the taxes collected from the people. And the government is empowered to collect these taxes and use them for such programs. For instance, to supply water, the government has to incur costs in pumping water, carrying it over long distances, laying down pipes for distribution, treating the water for impurities and finally collecting and treating waste water. It meets these expenses partly from the various taxes that it collects and partly by charging a price for water. This price is set so that most people can afford a certain minimum amount of water for daily use. The following pie chart shows where the central government spends money on. Rupee goes to State's share of taxes and duties Interest payments Central sector scheme Centrally sponsored scheme Defence Subsidies Finance commission and other transfers Other expenditure Pensions Source Union Budget 2018-2019 Amu and Kumar ride around Chennai. Amu says, Did you notice the roads in Siderpet were so bumpy and without street lights? I wonder what the place is like at night. Kumar, What better can you expect in a slum? Amu, Why should slums be like that? Shouldn't they have public facilities? Kumar says, I think public facilities are for all those who live in proper houses and colonies. They are the people who pay taxes. Amu, why do you say that? Slum dwellers are also citizens and they have rights too. Kumar, Are the government will go bankrupt this way. Amu, well, it has to find a way. Can you imagine what it would be like to live in a slum without proper roads, water, electricity? Kumar, uh... Amu, our constitution recognizes many of the public facilities as being a part of the right to life. The government must see that these rights are protected so that everyone can lead a decent life. Whose point of view do you agree with? Page number 112. 1. What are public facilities? Why should the government be responsible for providing public facilities? The government can get private companies to deliver some of the public facilities. For instance, contracts for building roads are given to private contractors. Distribution of electricity in Delhi is done by two private companies. However, the government must keep a close watch on these and ensure that these fulfill their commitment to reach these facilities to all people and at affordable prices. Why do you think the government must assume the overall responsibility for public facilities even when it gets private companies to do part of the job. 3. Look at your water bill and find out what the minimum rate is for municipal water in your area. Does the rate increase as the use of water increases? Why do you think the government charges a higher rate for greater use of water? 4. Find out the various kinds of taxes people pay to the government by talking to a salaried person, a person running his or her own factory or business and a shopkeeper. Share your findings in the classroom with your teacher. The following pie chart shows tax revenue of central government. Rupee comes from non-debt capital receipts, goods and services tax, GST and other taxes, borrowings and other liabilities, corporation tax, income tax, non-tax revenue, union excise duties, customs. Source, Union Budget 2018-2019 to Buses are the most important forms of public transport over short distances. It is the main link to the workplace for majority of the working people. With rapid urbanization, the public bus system even in the major cities has not been able to keep up with the demand. As an alternative, the government has planned ambitious metro rail projects for Delhi and other metropolitan cities. Rupees 11,000 crore was spent from the government budget 
for the construction of the first segment of the metro rail in Delhi using the latest technology. People have pointed out that this massive expenditure could have been avoided if only a fraction of this amount was spent on upgrading the public bus system. Would you agree? What do you think could be the solution for other regions of India? Page number 113. Water supply to Chennai. Is it available to all? While there is no doubt that public facilities should be made available to all, in reality we see that there is a great shortage of such facilities. In the rest of this chapter, we will read about the provision of water, which, as we have seen, is a public facility of great importance. Water supply in Chennai, as we saw at the beginning of the chapter, is marked by shortages. Municipal supply meets only about half the needs of the people of the city on an average. There are areas which get water more regularly than others. Those areas that are close to the shortage points get more water, whereas colonies further away receive less water. The burden of shortfalls in water supply falls mostly on the poor. The middle class, when faced with water shortages, are able to cope through a variety of private means such as digging bore wells, buying water from tankers and using bottled water for drinking. Apart from the availability of water, access to safe drinking water is also available to some and this depends on what one can afford. Once again, the wealthy have more choices thanks to the booming market in bottled water and water purifiers. People who can afford it have safe drinking water, whereas the poor are again left out. In reality, therefore it seems that it is only people with money who have the right to water, a far cry from the goal of universal access to sufficient and safe water. Taking Water from Farmers The shortage of water has opened up opportunities for private companies in a big way. Many private companies are providing water to cities by buying it from places around the city. In Chennai, the water is taken from nearby towns like Mamandur, Palur, Karungizi and from villages to the north of the city using a fleet of over 13,000 water tankers. Every month, the water dealers pay farmers an advance for the rights to exploit water sources on their land. This is water taken away not just from agriculture, but also from the drinking water supplies of the villagers. Groundwater levels have dropped drastically in all these towns and villages as a result. In rural areas, water is needed both for human use and use by the cattle. The sources of water are wells, hand pumps, ponds and sometimes overhead tanks. Much of these are privately owned. Compared to the urban areas, there is an even greater shortage of public water supply in rural areas. Page number 114 In Search of Alternatives The situation in Chennai is not unique. A similar scenario of shortages and acute crisis during the summer months is common to other cities of India. The shortage in municipal water is increasingly being filled by an expansion of private companies who are selling water for profit. Also common are the great inequalities in water use. The supply of water per person in an urban area in India should be about 135 litres per day, which is about 7 buckets, a standard set by the Urban Water Commission. Whereas people in slums have to make do with less than 20 litres a day per person, that is 1 bucket, people living in luxury hotels may consume as much as 1,600 litres, that is 80 buckets of water per day. A shortage of municipal water is often taken as a sign of failure of the government. Some people argue that since the government is unable to supply the amount of water that is needed and many of the municipal water departments are running at a loss, we should allow private companies to take over the task of water supply. According to them, private companies can perform better. Discuss. Do you think this would be a right step? What do you think would happen if the government withdraws from the task of supplying water. Consider the following facts. 1. Throughout the world, water supply is a function of the government. There are very few instances of private water supply. Public water supply in Porto Alegre Porto Alegre is a city in Brazil. Though there are many poor people in this city, 
What is remarkable is that it has far lower number of infant deaths as compared to most other cities of the world. The city's water department has achieved universal access to safe water and that is the main reason behind the lower number of infant deaths. The average price of water is kept low and the poor are charged half the basic rate. Whatever profit the department makes is used to improve the water supply. The working of the water department is transparent and people can have a direct say in deciding which projects the department should take up. Through a process of public meetings, people hear what the managers have to say and also vote on their priorities. The above was page number 114, page number 115. 2. There are areas in the world where public water supply has achieved universal access. See box below. 3. In a few cases, where the responsibility for water supply was handed over to private companies, there was a steep rise in the price of water making it unaffordable for many. Cities saw huge protests with riots breaking out in places like Bolivia, forcing the government to take back the service from private hands. 4. Within India, there are cases of success in government water departments, though these are few in number and limited to certain areas of their work. The water supply department in Mumbai raises enough money through water charges to cover its expenses on supplying water. In Hyderabad, a report shows that the department has increased coverage and improved performance in revenue collection. In Chennai, the department has taken several initiatives for harvesting rainwater to increase the level of groundwater. It has also used the services of private companies for transporting and distributing water, but the government water supply department decides the rate for water tankers and gives them permission to operate. Hence, they are called on contract. Discuss the main ideas in the above section. What do you think can be done to improve water supply? Do you think it is also important to conserve resources like water and electricity and to use more public transport? Mumbai's suburban railway is a well-functioning public transport system. It is the densest route in the world attending to 65 lakh passengers daily. Extending over a distance of 300 kilometers, these local trains allow people living far away from Mumbai to find work in the city. Note that the high cost of housing in cities makes it impossible for an average worker to live in the city. Page number 116 Extending sanitation facilities Latrines for us, they exclaimed in astonishment. We go and perform our functions out in the open. Latrines are for you big people. Mahatma Gandhi recounting untouchables grievances. Rajkot Sanitation Committee, 1896. Besides safe drinking water, sanitation is a must in prevention of waterborne diseases. However, the sanitation coverage in India is even lower than that of water. Official figures for 2011 show that 87% of the households in India have access to drinking water and about 53% have access to sanitation, that is, toilet facilities within the premises of residence. Once again, it is the poor, both in the rural and urban areas, who lack access to sanitation. Sulab, a non-government organization, has been working for nearly five decades to address the problems of sanitation facing low-caste, low-income people in India. It has constructed more than 8,500 community toilet blocks and 1.5 million household toilets, giving access to sanitation to 20 million people. The majority of the users of the Sulab facilities are from the poor working class. Sulab enters into contracts with municipalities or other local authorities to construct toilet blocks with government funds. Local authorities provide land and funds for setting up the services, whereas maintenance costs are sometimes financed through user charges. For example, Rupees 2 is charged for use of the latrines in the cities. Next time you see a Sulab toilet, you might want to find out yourself how it functions. Do you think that lack of access to proper sanitation facilities affects people's lives? How? Why do you think that this would impact women and girls more acutely? The above was page number 116. Page number 117. 
The Census of India 2001 puts rural household electrification at 44%, leaving around 78 million households still in the dark. Conclusion Public facilities relate to our basic needs and the Indian Constitution recognizes the right to water, health, education, etc. as being a part of the right to life. Thus, one of the major roles of the government is to ensure adequate public facilities for everyone. But progress on this front has been far from satisfactory. There is a shortage in supply and there are inequalities in distribution. Compared to the metros in large cities, towns and villages are underprovided. Compared to wealthy localities, the poorer localities are underserviced. Handing over these facilities to private companies may not be the answer. Any solution needs to take account of the important fact that every citizen of the country has a right to these facilities, which should be provided to her or him in an equitable manner. Page number 118 Exercises 1. Why do you think there are so few cases of private water supply in the world? 2. Do you think water in Chennai is available to and affordable by all? Discuss 3. How is the sale of water by farmers to water dealers in Chennai affecting the local people? Do you think local people can object to such exploitation of groundwater? Can the government do anything in this regard? 4. Why are most of the private hospitals and private schools located in major cities and not in towns or rural areas? 5. Do you think the distribution of public facilities in our country is adequate and fair? Give an example of your own to explain. 6. Take some of the public facilities in your area, such as water, electricity, etc. Is there scope to improve these? What, in your opinion, should be done? Complete the table. Water? Is it available? How can it be improved? Electricity? Is it available? How can it be improved? Roads? Is it available? How can it be improved? Public transport? Is it available? How can it be improved? 7. Are the above public facilities shared equally by all the people in your area? Elaborate. 8. Data on some of the public facilities are collected as part of the census. Discuss with your teacher when and how the census is conducted. 9. Private educational institutions, schools, colleges, universities, technical and vocational training institutes are coming up in our country in a big way. On the other hand, educational institutes run by the government are becoming relatively less important. What do you think would be the impact of this? Discuss. Page number 119. Glossary Sanitation Provision of facilities for the safe disposal of human urine and feces. This is done by construction of toilets and pipes to carry the sewerage and treatment of waste water. This is necessary so as to avoid contamination. Company A company is a form of business set up by people or by the government. Those that are promoted and owned by individual or groups are called private companies. For example, Tata Steel is a private company, whereas Indian Oil is a company run by the government. Universal Access Universal access is achieved when everyone has physical access to a good and can also afford it. For instance, a tap connection at home will allow physical access to water. And if the price of water is low or is provided free, everyone will be able to afford it. Basic Needs Primary requirements of food, water, shelter, sanitation, health care and education necessary for survival. The chapter 9 of total 10 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Vasundhara Bose You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control Bati Langlingdo Technical Assistance Vikas Sangwan Assistance in Production Amit Kumar Direction and Production Vimalesh Chaudhary This audiobook is brought to you by CIET and CERT New Delhi, India